Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how to use SHAP and we'll focus in this one on the local interpretability powers behind SHAP. If you're interested in learning more, I have a course on Udemy where we show SHAP and we also show the step-by-step -step guide on how to implement XGBoost. As you might know, so SHAP, this is a way for us to implement those advanced machine learning or artificial intelligence models, which are most of the time is known for being black boxes. So SHAP is a way to introduce some interpretation to it. And this is why this is such a cool technique to know and to really to have on your toolkit. First thing that we'll do in this video is to import and install some libraries and then as well the data. So first thing is import libraries and data. And here we go. So let's first start by installing the two libraries that we need. So pip install and then shap. And we need to put an exclamation point at the beginning. And then as well, pip install data set. So pip install and then and this is where we are going to get our data. So you do control enter. And then the next step would then to be to actually import the libraries. And here we go. So we will do from by data set. And let me close this one. So from by data set, we would import data. Here we go. And again, close this one. And let me put a comment here. And then as well, we would import pandas as pd. Here you go. Uh, again, shift enter. And now we get the data. So df equals to, and then use data, open parenthesis, and then we open the single quotes, and then we include housing with capital H. And then let's have a look. So df dot head, open the parenthesis and shift enter. And let's have a look. So we see here we have the price. So this is about housing prices. And then we have a bunch of uh, variables here for us that we can use. And what we see is that we have here some yes and no's. And what we'll do is that we'll transform all these string variables into dummy ones. So next step is to prepare the data. And let's also include that in our section. So prep data. And here we go. So the first one is the dummy variables. And here we do df equals to we use our pandas to use the function get underscore dummies. Here you go. And then inside we include our df, comma, and then drop first in order to not fall into the dummy variable trap. And here we include true. Here we go. Let's also have a look again to see what happens. So head, and here we go. And we see that we no longer have yes and no's, but rather we have ones and zeros. Next step is to isolate x and y. So y equals to our df dot i lock. And here we go. And then we open the square brackets. Then we want all the observations. And then it's on index zero. So we put the zero. And then we do the x, so x equals to the f dot i lock open the square brackets. And then I want all the observations. And then I want starting from the index one, all up until the very last one. All right, so this is all super easy. Let's go to the next step, which is to create training and test set. And here we go. So let's do create x train x test and then we have the y train and then lastly we have the y test and equals to and before that before i forget so from sk learn dot model underscore selection i want to import the train test split because that is the function that we exactly need to use. So train test split. And then inside and let me close this on the left so we can have more room. And here you go. So I would open the parenthesis and I include my x. 
then my Y, and then below I include the test size, which is equal to 0 0.2, and then for you to have a similar results, random state equals to 15.02, which is my date of birth. And here we go. So control enter. And now the next step is to actually do our random forest. So random forest. And let's go. So more code. And now again, from sklearn. So we need to import a function to do our random forest from sklearn dot and then ensemble. I want to import my random forest regressor. Here we go. And then what I do is that I create my model, which is equal to my random forest regressor that we have just imported. I include the number of estimators. Here we go. And equals to let's just do 20 to do it very quickly. And then let's do a random state so that again, we have similar results to me 1502 as well. And then in our model, we're going to fit it to our data to our x train, and then to our y train. Here we go, shift enter. And after we have actually done this, now it's ready to shap local interpretability. And here we go. Let's also put shap all in caps like this. And let's continue. So what we need to create. So first we need to import shap and then we're going to create an explainer object or an explainer kernel. So import shap and then create this explainer, which would then go to our shap. So explainer equals to, and then I go to shap that I import, and then I use the kernel explainer, kernel explainer, open the parenthesis. I use my model that I've just created and then dot predict, and then I would use my X test. Cool thing, or one of the very cool things about SHAP is that it does use our model, but the data that you actually use for it is actually the test one. So this is one of the very uh, cool things. Here you go, let's do control enter. And one of the things about local interpretability is that we explain instances, we explain observations. So what we will do is that we'll have a look at our x test, x test dot you know hat for us to have a better look, so that we can choose some observations. And now yes, it's finally time to do our local interpretability, interpretability, and how to do this. And let me give you some room. So we start by selecting this instance which is basically based on this list. So for us, let's choose, for instance, 95. So we go and we do x test, then we do dot lock, and then let me put a capital X here. And then I do the double square brackets, and then I put 95. And then I need to create this SHAP instance, which is basically equal to, and then I go to my explainer, and then I do shap underscore values, open parentheses, and then inside I include my instance. Next, we need to initiate JavaScript. So shap dot init js. This is so that it creates the graph. And then finally, we actually do the plotting. So shap dot force plot, open parentheses. We go to the x planar and then we do dot expected value comma then we use the shap instance that we have just created so shap underscore instance and then lastly it is the instance that we named above so instance here we go let's do control enter to see if it runs and here we go and how to have a look at this so the key thing is this base value that is here and this is roughly, you know, Ceteris Paribus, what would the house be predicted without any kind of driver absence. And then what SHAP is doing is, okay, from this base value, which would have been the value 
without any drivers up until the predicted value. Basically, it is just trying to see for which of the drivers how much would be the value and which ones are contributing in a positive way and which ones are in a negative ways. And in this case, so increasing the price would be the red ones. And then if they are decreasing the price, then there would be a blue. For instance, big lot size is contributing positively, air conditioning contributing positively, garage positively, but only one bathroom is contributing negatively. Personally, I find it a very good way in order to interpret some of your edge case observations and also in general to give examples because people understand far better through examples the predictions of your model. And as a result, we're actually done with our SHAP local interpretability. We'll have two more videos on this, on global interpretability and as well on the dependency plots. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one. Until then, have fun!